Hello, and welcome to the Illinois Tutoring Initiative. We are excited that you are joining our team in supporting the learning and social emotional well being of Illinois students with high impact tutoring. The online training in Pearl is mandatory, and you must complete all sections before you can start tutoring sessions in Pearl. The first short video is presented here help us to achieve our goals for this orientation module and provide you with information on the following. So the first one will be on program commitments, information on how to actually use Pearl, criminal background checks or CBCs, responsibilities and job duties, professionalism requirements such as mandated training, conduct, evaluation, and then last but not least is how to protect student data and privacy. But first, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Melissa Comstock, and I am the Institutional Partner Office or the IPO Director at Southeastern Illinois College. Our Office Support Specialist is Gina Montez, and she will be your first contact if you ever need anything. To reach us, feel free to use our email or text messages. Our office hours are 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Let me tell you a little bit more about the Illinois Tutoring Initiative. This is a research-based initiative and one of four state pillars designed in conjunction with the Illinois P20 councils to support the Illinois learning and social emotional well-being of students in the wake of the pandemic. This project is in collaboration with and also funded in whole or in part by the Illinois State Board of Education, the Illinois Community College Board, and the Illinois Board of Higher Education. Our program features are committed to First thing is collaboration between institutions of higher education and school districts in need for within the six regions across the state. We collaborate with all six regions as well as our own research team, media relations, and others within the ISU's Illinois College of Education. As a tutor hired by SIC, we are located in region six, which is highlighted in yellow. We work closely with Illinois Community College Board or ICCB, as well as the Southern Illinois University in Carbondale. Our second thing is high impact tutoring practices. And what that means is we provide three one hour sessions per week for every student. Our aim is to build sustained and strong relationships by focusing on relationship building and we are committed to alignment with school curriculum. Our third thing is we tutor students that are in grades three through eight. Number four is we have in-person and online tutoring, which that includes either one-on-one -on -one individual tutoring, or we also do what we call one to three, which is a small group tutoring. And the areas that we cover are math as well as reading. Our fifth thing is training, support, and supervision of our tutors, which means that we will provide and pay you for your online training, provide ongoing support and resources, and then supervise with assessment and evaluations. To get you on your way to tutoring, we want to spend just a few minutes on getting you familiar with a program that we use called Pearl. It's a data management system used by tutors hired by Southeastern Illinois College, as well as others across the state. I will explain Pearl more in detail since you will need to access this program when you begin tutoring sessions. First, be sure to save the following link into your favorites on your personal electronic device used during tutoring sessions so you can easily log into Pearl 
prior to the start of each tutoring session. So on this slide, the things there's five things that you really want to focus on whenever you log into Pearl. The first thing is our online training and onboarding, which is basically what we are doing at this time. The second thing is are the tutoring sessions. And whenever you log into the main dashboard, you will see all of this on what needs to be completed. But whenever you actually log into the sessions, first thing you need to do with your students is take attendance. And then you fill out your post-session feedback forms. So you're filling out sessions on each of your students. And in return, your students fill out a report on you or the post-session feedback forms. The last thing is the weekly reflections. I'll get to those in a minute, but those are due at the end of each week of tutoring. So this is an example of what I was talking about earlier as far as what Perl looks like whenever you initially log in. So at the top is the link that you will probably want to save into your favorites. And then your username is always your first name, period, your last name, at sic.edu. So here's an example of what my email address is if you ever need to contact me. And then the pers or the password is what you will choose uh, whenever you set up your account with Pearl. One more thing before we go to tutor responsibilities. Whenever you do log into your SIC email account, you wanna make sure that you have received a platform invite email from me because I have to add you as a user. Whenever you have received that email, you just click on the link and then you will be prompted to log into Pearl so you can start your online training. You've probably already done that, but just a reminder that anytime you need to log into Pearl, just always save that link and that's the quickest way you can get in through your electronic device. Just some other quick things about Pearl. Once you have logged in, Feel free to go in and update your profile page and then also check your list of students as well as the calendar, calendar, which is located on the left side of your screen. As far as your tutor responsibilities, there are actually seven things that we would like you to complete whenever you are hired as a tutor. First thing is to complete all required paperwork with our HR Executive Director and Legal Affairs at Southeastern Illinois College. Her name is Sky Fowler. After you have completed all your paperwork, she will let me know we have like a grants folder for all our new hires where I will check that, that folder and make sure that we have scheduled an interview. And then from there we go on uh, with these next few steps. For step number two, we will have you sign the mileage stipend agreement form. Gina will send that to you via DocuSign. Basically, once you open the email link, you click on it and it will automatically be directed, be directed to me. I will sign it and then it will go to uh, Dr. Karen Weiss, who is one of the administrators here at SIC. So she signs it and then we send it directly to HR. So you will be paid your monthly uh, mileage stipend. Third thing is you will fill out a Bushu online form. If you need that link, you can always request it from me, your IPO through the email. What you uh, have electronically signed that and submitted it, you will actually, uh, we will track that, make sure that you have completed this document because it satisfies two steps uh, one is the Bushu authorization, as well as the employee's history, which is through face law. We have a check of that. So those are two things that you really, really need to complete and make sure that that gets uh, done. Number four, we need for you to download the DCFS CANTS form. And I will also send that to you in an email. Once you have completed this form, you need to sign it, scan it and then email it to that email address that's on the screen. If you are a district employee, like you work for the school, you're a teacher, you're a para, then you only need to complete the steps that we listed above. If you are not a district employee, you don't work for the school, you need to take an additional few steps. 
First thing is just you need to identify a location for fingerprinting and then schedule an appointment with Bushu. And then complete fingerprinting as scheduled uh, from any vendor specific forms or processes. So this is an example of the Bushu form that you fill out online. This is just the first page. It asks you a lot of personal information like your social security number, your address, your name, and stuff like that. So it is all kept confidential within Bushu's website. So I know I had to fill out one as well as Gina. So, you know, just realize that we try to keep everything as confidential as possible. This is an example of what the next form that you have to fill out, which is the DCFS CANTS form. Make sure you sign and date the bottom in blue or black ink. And then uh, highlighted also in yellow on the screen is that email address. You have to email it to that address. Do not send it to me. Do not send it to Sky and HR. So make sure you're just emailing this form. Just put it in a PDF and you just email it directly to that email link. This slide is how you schedule an appointment. So if you're not an employee of the school, you will need to take this extra step, contact Bushu at the phone number listed there on the screen, and you will uh, set up an appointment to do your background check. Next thing for responsibilities as a tutor, the goals for this portion of your online training are to describe your job duties and to talk about just some opportunities for collaboration with other shareholders. What are shareholders? Uh, these include you as a tutor, your IPO, who is me at SIC, as well as our district partners. As a tutor for the Illinois Tutoring Initiative, you are responsible for following um, the, the job duties that I'm going to talk about on the next slide. So your first duty is obviously this online training that you're doing right now. Uh, you will need to complete all required training established by IPO or me uh, prior to being approved to provide tutoring to the students at your school. Uh, your first training module, which will be outlined, there's the different steps in Perl for the onboarding. So within section two, uh, you, we will concentrate on high impact tutoring, what it is. Uh, what it is, is, is it's a research based and the foundations of our program. You will also learn effective strategies for both planning and teaching with your students. After you have been assigned to a student or a group of students and understand the student's needs, you will be asked to complete ongoing training, such as content modules related to reading and or math. For example, you may require training in third grade math or a better understanding of reading comprehension strategies. Optional training will also be available at some point in the future. Your second job duty is ongoing assessment and planning. You will be providing feedback after each tutoring session, as well as weekly reflection sheets. Each of the feedback forms will be located in Perl, and it will be all located on your dashboard of when it's due. So at the end of each tutoring session, you as well as your students will log in and respond to the post-session feedback forms. The weekly reflection will be completed at the end of each week and submitted by Sunday at about midnight our time or Central Standard Time. Uh, we expect this to help you uh, to con consider how your week has progressed and how you might plan for the next week. Remember, you're being paid for this. You get paid $50 per hour, but you will also be paid uh, not only the tutoring, but the one and a half hours for planning each week. So we provided you with an example because not all tutors have the same group of students. So for this example, if you tutor on a Monday and Wednesday right after school from 3.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Uh, with a small group of students, the max you can have is three. This would be considered one assignment or you will be paid one and a half hours per week as long as you complete all documentation and filling out those weekly reflections. Another example is if you tutor on a Tuesday and Thursday at the same time with another small group of students, 
then you will be paid an additional one and a half hours per week. So that brings it to a grand total of three hours per week. So make sure whenever you fill out your timesheet, this is just a little tip when you submit your timesheet to me every two weeks, make sure that you choose a day that you don't tutor and also don't put it on a weekend like a Saturday or a Sunday. So you can put it before school, you can put it after you tutor or even just picking a day. Most people don't tutor on Friday, so that would be a good day to choose to put your planning period for each week. Your third job duty is your tutoring sessions. Whether you're tutoring with an individual or a small group of three students, you will be delivering 60 minutes of tutoring sessions three times per week. You may be located at a school district or online. Now online is only when we had it during COVID, whenever we maybe couldn't provide in classroom or in person tutoring, but we also have high school online math. So those are other options if you would like to tutor in those areas. But for right now, everything has to be in person with your students. Uh, if you have signed up for more than one assignment, you will be tutoring three times per week for each assignment. Your student needs for uh, tutoring will be outlined for you from the district partners. When you receive your student assignments, you will also receive this information. Uh, and this will help you plan your tutoring sessions. So if there is something you're not familiar with, you need additional resources or help whenever you are unfamiliar with, maybe if you're a sixth grade teacher and you haven't taught third grade math for a long time or if ever, reach out to, to me, your IPO, and I'd be glad to help provide you with more resources. Uh, you're required to complete documentation, including those biweekly timesheets that are due to me, uh, as well as the surveys and other various forms. So basically, I just tell all tutors, if you don't fill those out, I check that. I want your timesheet to match your schedule and pearl the times that you work throughout the week. So make sure that it does match. Otherwise, you will be not paid. You won't be paid for those times. And then if you need additional information on how to complete your timesheet, uh, feel free to reach out uh, and let me know. And, or you can also reach out to an experienced tutor, someone that's tutored at your school before you if you need additional assistance or just an example. And then also do not forget to add your planning time each week, as long as it's a day that you don't tutor or not a Saturday or Sunday, you should be fine. So how do we find our timesheets as well as other HR documents at SIC? We use the Falcon portal. So here's an example of what the Falcon portal looks like. If you just go to our main website, which is sic.edu, up in the top in yellow is the little Falcon portal. Uh, but before you can move forward to access all of your documents, we do have uh, you log in at the top. Your username is always your email address and then the password that you set up initially, and then you hit log in. Now, if you use your phone, it might be easier because you have to do another verification. You put in another code. So make sure that you're filling in that information before you can move forward to access all your HR documents. So once you have got to the main page or the SIC applications, you will find the My SIC. So you want to click on that little app in the middle of the screen. Um, at the top of the My SIC application, type in your username. So I use mine as an example. So it's your first name, period, last name only, and then your password again. Next thing is hit login. And then the next page will look like this at the bottom. You wanna click employees, which is circled in yellow. Uh, you will have all this employee information. You can review your pay statements, your deduction information around taxes, and then you guys are not given any time off, but just realize that all that documentation is there that you can check your paycheck stubs. And if you ever have any questions, you can reach out to me or Sky Fowler and there's her email address.
As you scroll down at the bottom of this page, you will find your tutor timesheet. This is where you can print it, fill it out. You can also fill it out electronically. Uh, just make sure you sign your name at the bottom that says that you agree with what you put on your timesheet. And then you can send it to me every two weeks. Some of our districts have one person that collects your timesheets and then they will send it to me, all the timesheets from your district. So ask your IPO or your district contact what your procedure will be within your school district. So here's an example of a timesheet. Uh, so make sure that you're including your planning period, which is one and a half hours per week per assignment. Just make sure you're not picking a weekend or I always suggest picking a day that you don't tutor. So if you don't tutor on a Monday or a Friday, just put it on that date. Make sure you include your name at the top, your employee ID, which is the second line on the left. If you don't know that, ask your IPO or your district contact. The other thing is make sure under title, you put your school name. Here's an example of Carmi White. That's one of our districts. So make sure you're putting next to your title, the school that you're at, so I can make sure that that matches and I have everybody's timesheet. And then make sure all your dates are in order. And then of course you put your time in and time out. And then at the bottom, make sure your hours are calculated correctly for the total hours. You're paid $50 per hour and it should put down the total. So it would be eight hours here times $50 per hour. Make sure you sign it, scan it in a PDF document, and then send it on. So that will be every two weeks that you will submit a timesheet. Okay, more on responsibilities. You're required to complete your feedback forms each week and then also use the dashboard and your Perl uh, whenever you log in as a guide because it will tell you what is still due, what you have completed and what is uh, still outstanding. So make sure you're checking that on a regular basis, probably every day as well as your SIC email account because Gina and I do send out reminders about timesheets that are due, any online training, anything that's coming up. So make sure you're checking your SIC email account as well as Pearl for any updates. Uh, we will be providing research uh, information on documents, our programs, outcomes, information that supports our program improvements. And then we will also be asking you to complete surveys throughout the semester that will tell us how things are going for you. So make sure you're just checking those two things regularly so you stay um, posted on just up, upcoming things. We want you to collaborate. Uh, this tutoring initiative is clearly committed to supporting all stakeholders throughout collaboration. Uh, we want to help you succeed in reaching your goals as a tutor, uh, creating that culture of open communication, as well as cultivating healthy mindsets about feedback. We just believe that that's an integral part of our program is ongoing support because we just think a well-prepared tutor leads to academic success for all of our students. Bottom line, reach out, ask questions if you need anything. So the last portion of this training will concentrate on professionalism. Just some quick reminders, uh, always arrive at least, you know, five to 10 minutes early whenever you are tutoring with your students just so you're kind of prepared, you have everything set up and ready to go before they arrive. And then just regular punctual attendance is required by all tutors. Uh, we want to make sure that you know what, that if you have scheduled versus unscheduled time away from tutoring, uh, we do track that. So just make, make sure you're well prepared and um, know where you're supposed to be every day. And we want to avoid at all cost anything that's unscheduled because we want to provide tutoring to our students. So just to give you an example, uh, time away from work is either arranged or in advance, which is scheduled, such as appointments, you know, doctor's appointments, meetings. But anything that's not arranged in advance is considered unscheduled, such as unexpected personal or family illness, family or home emergencies. 
So just keep those in mind. Uh, keep your IPO posted if you have something that comes up. Uh, some of the guidelines for excuse absences. Absences for academic commitments, job interviews, or personal reasons will only be considered excused if you provide information. We want that at least one week in advance or let us know as soon as possible. And then, yeah, just notify me. I'm your IPO, but I'm also your tutor supervisor. And just explain your absence. You can put in an email or you can call me. Uh, and then if you need to mark missed, I mean, I know this semester we're really working on reducing the amount of absences that we have for our tutors. But if for some reason, uh, always take attendance on your students. Uh, absences for illnesses or personal family emergencies will be considered excused if you provide notification before your tutoring session is expected to start. So try not to wait like 10 minutes before your tutoring session and be like, oh, I need to call Melissa. So try to give as much notice as possible. Uh, no shows are not allowed. Uh, you can't just not show up for your students, not mark anything, take attendance. Uh, it just will not work for us. So if you fail, just don't comply with results, uh, we will probably uh, no longer have you as a tutor. So keep us posted on what you're doing. That's the best policy. Uh, we do have a thing, it's called co-tutoring. I don't have it on this slide. But if for some reason your students don't make it and you have another tutor with students, uh, we will compensate you for your time whenever you are working with another tutor and their group of students. So let me know if this does happen because I want to make sure you're paid for your time because we can document that in Perl. If for some reason your students are late or you have uh, what we call wait time, you will be paid 15 minutes or 0.25 hours for your wait time. So if you have questions about that, let me know. And just in general, ask me questions. I'd be glad to help and provide you some examples on what we can do to make sure you get paid on your timesheet. Cell phone reminders. Cell phones are, everybody has one. They're great for classroom tools, but if used inappropriate, you know, not appropriately and they can cause problems. So we ask that you set your cell phones on silent and refrain from taking calls, especially personal calls during your tutoring sessions. If it becomes a problem, we will contact you for a discussion. A failure to comply can result in your dismissal as a tutor. So please don't use your cell phones during tutoring sessions. Tutor accountability. Always complete your training and any training that is specific for your content material, whether it be the math or the reading. Uh, complete any paperwork assigned, including timesheets, forms that we need to have you sign, and your two tutoring forms, the session feedback forms, as well as weekly reflections. At SIC, we do have annual trainings, so make sure you're checking your SIC email accounts for any updates. I will also send you out reminders to make sure that you're checking your email and to make sure that you're taking those online, like security data trainings, I know is one of them, but if there's anything that comes up, just make sure you're checking your emails about those reminders. Student data and privacy. What is student data and privacy? Basically, it's confidentiality. It refers to the use of personal data without consent. Uh, security is what keeps personal data protected. Student data are professionally identifiable information such as their student names, parent names, home language, demographics, grade level, test scores, so on and so forth are what we want to avoid anytime we send out emails or communicate uh, with IPOs or anybody else within our districts. Uh, avoid emailing anyone at SIC, even in HR, any information. Uh, so that's why whenever I reach out to the district contacts, I log them in as a user in Teams. And that's where we house 
all of our tutor documents, which includes like our student data, a tutor schedule, any changes we communicate um, through Teams. So we want to definitely keep it secure because that's considered a secure environment. FERPA, and basically what that means, it's protected uh, the access and sharing of a student's educational record, which is all information directed directly related to a particular student as part of their education. Second thing is COPPA, and that requires organizations to have a clear privacy policy, provide direct notice to parents, and then obtain that parental consent before collecting any information from children under the age of 13. Uh, teachers and other school officials are authorized to provide this consent, but only for the use in the educational context. In general, it is important to remember that all student personal information belongs to the student and therefore should be kept private. This includes demographic information, grades, and assessment results. We can ensure student privacy by maintaining confidentiality in our everyday practices. So you as a tutor are responsible for holding every student's data in confidence and sharing it only with necessary parties. So keep that in mind. Uh, we do appreciate your dedication to the Illinois Tutoring Initiative, so thank you for listening to this presentation.